The Hamatan season is here. Whether we like it or not, it's a very dry one, very dusty as well. I like the fact that it's actually chilly. Uh, it's uncomfortably warm during the day, but at night and early in the morning, I absolutely love the weather. Uh, but as much as we're enjoying the Hamatan in certain ways, I hope you're taking care of your skin and I hope that you're also taking very good care of yourself in order to avoid some of the inflammations that come with the season as well. And so that's what we'll be discussing today. It's very likely that you might experience some flu, uh, cold, cough. Uh, it could be as extreme as bronchitis or asthma as well. And so for people who have asthma especially, you need to be extra, extra careful this season. And we have our doctor in the studio with us. He's a general practitioner and he'll be talking to us about ways by which we can prevent or at least treat some of these inflammations that come with the Hamatan. Dr. Elegem, good morning. How are you doing? Okay, Happy you. New Year, by the way. Happy New Year to you. How's your year looking so far? Oh, it's looking good. Oh, I need you to pump good. up a bit. Looking a good? A good prospect. Yeah? Yeah. This Christmas, did you enjoy yourself much or you're working throughout? Oh, yes, we were working. I know. Yeah. We it's had not time easy to spend with family okay. and friends. So okay. we had some fun. At least that's important. Yes. But let's talk about the Hamatan. It's here again with yeah. all the complications that come with it as well. Tell us some of the things that we could, um, you know, and I'm talking about health wise. Yes. So, what are some of the health um, challenges that we might face with the season? Oh, well, as you, as you said in the beginning, usually the Hamatan brings problems with the respiratory system, okay. so the bronchitis and the asthma. But in addition to that, some people with certain skin conditions, eczema and allergic dermatitis, also begin to flare up during these seasons. Is because, it? Yes. One of the main triggers of allergic skin problems is dry skin. Yeah. So you can imagine if your skin is getting drier mm -hmm. around this, this period, then you be, begin to flare up a lot of rashes, itching. So you should scales. moisturize a bit more. Yes, moisturizing, yes. But you see, people think that you moisturize with lotions. It's rather the opposite. You moisturize with oils. Oh. So o lotions are water-based. Okay. They evaporate easily. So ah. you want to do, that's why we use shea butter and Vaseline, which are more oil-based. So I that see. you can save a layer of moisture between the skin and the oil on top of it. And then you'll be fine to go. So you should ditch your lotions during Hamatan, yes, basically what you're based. saying. Lotions, creams, water-based, emollients, oil-based are better. So you notice that some people would be using certain lotions and during the Hamatan, their skin allergic problems may get worse. Yeah. Because water dries up. So oil share butter, yeah, most share butter. importantly. Share butter I cool. see. So at least some uh, inform information there for you as well. But tell us yeah. about asthma and bronchitis and how they are related to Hamatan. Okay, so asthma and bronchitis are two different conditions. Okay. And I think that it would be better to talk about them separately. Separately. Let's start yes. with asthma then. Yes, asthma. So asthma is very common. Um, <laughs> asthma is a very common condition. Mm -hmm. um, it's a condition of the respiratory tract. All right. And um, it affects about 2 in 1,000 Ghanaians. That's the recent research that has been done shows that every 2 in 1,000 Ghanaians may have an asthmatic condition. Mm. Um, it affects both adults and children, male and female, and people of all ages. But usually in children, diagnosing asthma is a little bit difficult. Okay. Right. So what is asthma? Asthma refers to a reversible obstruction in the airway with associated inflammation. Mm. And it's usually caused by certain triggers. Um, the cold, dry weather is one. Mm -hmm. But other triggers would include allergens like dust and pollen, we also have exercise. So there are some people who exercise and then begin to have this difficulty breathing. Mm -hmm. Other people too react to irritant smokes and gases. Mm -hmm. For example, fumes from cars, certain strong perfumes and scents. Yeah. Some people react to food. So some people take in food and they get asthmatic attacks. Some people also get asthmatic attack from certain medications. Mm -hmm. And you also have strong emotions like stress, anger, sadness, excitement, triggering asthmatic attacks. Mm. Usually people who have these attacks present with difficulty breathing and yeah. then most of the time they cough. They also present with some noisy breathing we call wheezing. Mm -hmm. So you hear some form of whistling sounds when they breathe. And another symptom people don't usually pick up is the chest tightness. Mm. So those are some of the symptoms of asthma. Is asthma not hereditary? Well, there are two components to it. There's the genetic component and there's the environmental component I to see. it. I see. So yes. you can develop asthma from the environment? Yes, actually. So in children or in families where asthma is present, you have 
some of the children in the family picking up the asthma too because it's passed on by a gene. Mm -hmm. But sometimes in adults, you might find people all of a sudden presenting with symptoms of asthma. Yeah. They didn't have it when they were children, mm -hmm. but suddenly they begin to have these symptoms. And usually it's related to um, occupational things. So for example, you work in a place where a lot of dust and smoke is prevalent. You might begin to have what we call an irritant induced asthma. Mm. Okay, so these people do not have any prior history of childhood asthma, but they may develop it in their adulthood. But yes, there's a hereditary component and then there's an environmental component too. I see, and hamatan definitely can cause. Yes, so cold asthma. air, okay. dry air, uh -huh. and a combination of cold and dry air are triggers for asthma. How long must I be exposed to it before I develop asthma? So let's just say that the hamatan just started. So as I'm saying, there's the genetic component. So there are people who are predisposed yeah. to having asthmatic attacks. Mm -hmm. They are asthmatics. Yep. So during, in this weather, they are likely to have attacks. But if you are not an asthmatic, it's not very likely you would get an asthmatic attack. That's okay. where bronchitis comes in. Ah. So this weather also creates a very good environment for certain viral infections to thrive. Mm -hmm. So you not being asthmatic, you may begin to experience some cough, difficulty breathing, a mild fever, mm. and then you may have some of these wheezy sounds. This is what we call bronchitis. It's simply an inflammation of the airway, mainly the trachea and the bronchioles. Okay. So that one can be bronchitis. But those who have asthma have that genetic predisposition. It's a chronic condition, so we know they have this problem. And then when they are exposed to certain triggers, like cold, dry weather, mm. dusty condition, pollen, strong scents, they have attacks. Can one person yeah. get both at the same time? And I'm talking asthma and bronchitis. So usually, if you have asthma, we will not say you have bronchitis. Okay. So people who don't have any known lung conditions tend to have bronchitis. But if you have asthma and maybe you have an infection and you get an attack, we say you're having an acute asthmatic attack. Please do you understand? I, I get what you mean. Yeah. <laughs> I like how he asks if I understand. Yeah. And I hope that you understand as well. If you have any questions to ask us, you know what to do at TV3 Ghana on Twitter, Facebook and Instagram. And the WhatsApp number should be on your screen soon. So you can send us your questions as well. And so now, okay, how do I prevent it? Is it preventable, especially the environmental aspect of it? How do I prevent it? And if it's already occurred, what do I do? Okay, great. So, mainly for the management of asthma, it starts with patient education. Mm. Usually, mm -hmm. usually people tend to have, people who have asthma already know they have the conditions, but how, they, how do they approach it? Yeah. First of all, you have to, especially for little children, their parents also have to know that these children have these conditions and these are some of the triggers. Mm -hmm. We've already talked about the triggers, but some of them may be evasive. For example, um, the dust and the pollen and the allergens, usually people keep thick carpets and thick curtains in their house. We tend to accumulate and collect dust. So these fairy things tend to cause these children who breathe it in, even adults who breathe mm. it in. And when they have asthma, they tend to have attacks. Yeah. So usually we try to ask them to identify some of these things. Is there an animal in the house? Mm. Are they doing some construction work in the house? Are they doing some construction work in the road, on the road in front of the house? So that if you have these conditions where these triggers are bound, yeah. then you can take the child or the person out of that environment to reduce the attacks. Okay. So it's the education that's most important. All right. The next thing is that usually people with asthma have some medications that they are managed on. So we have medication, you know, they, some people have these inhalers. Mm -hmm. They are rescue medications so that as soon as they begin to have these symptoms, maybe you are coughing, you are having difficulty breathing, you are wheezing, you can quickly use these medications as a rescuer medication okay. to come out of that state. All but right. usually we advise that Anytime you have an attack, you use your rescue medication, you should immediately come to the hospital because the attack might not have aborted. Okay. Okay. There are, there, there are people who use garlic when they get an asthma attack. There's so many things that people do. Um, you know, what you're talking about rescue or what? Medication. Uh, medication. Yes. And so if I don't have the inhaler and I have garlic and all of that, does that help? And are those even the right things to use? Well, a lot of research has been done into plant medicine and yeah. how these extracts from garlic and other herbs can be used to control asthma mm. but usually for rescue medications these are specific inhaled medications that open up the airway okay. so what happens in asthmatics is that their airway gets narrow mm. as 
the trigger is present. So the airway begins to narrow up. So it might be this size, and then in the presence of the trigger, it closes up. So what the rescue medication does is that it aborts the closure of the airway and opens it up a little bit, and then they can breathe better. I, I don't think garlic can do that as quickly as the inhaler. So, okay, yes, so you so should it, always have an inhaler. Yes, you should have an inhaler. And that should be the first point of call yes, if you please. start getting an asthmatic attack. Yes. Exactly. Okay, and, and what about bronchitis? So for bronchitis, usually, not all bronchitis present with wheezing okay. or airway obstruction or difficulty breathing. The common symptoms are usually cough. Maybe it might start with a blocked nose, mm. some runny, stuffy nose, and then all of a sudden you have some cough. Okay. You know, so when you have these things, usually you present to the hospital, you'll be examined, and a diagnosis would be made. In children who get bronchitis, they tend to wheeze, and usually we nebulize them. When you say nebulize, ne okay, so basically, what does it mean in lay terms, layman's terms? Okay, so basically nebulization is a, is a form of administering medication where the drug is aeros aerosolized. So you put it into a machine, it's passed into a gas chamber, it's placed on your face and you breathe in and out okay. so that the, the drug is delivered directly into mm -hmm. your lungs. I yeah. see, that's what it is. There yeah. are some parents who have herbs, so they boil it, they put it in maybe like a bowl or... Um, a bucket and mm. then they they let you go down on it and they cover you with cloth and yeah. they allow you to breathe in i don't yes. know if you've experienced that yes, if you've yes. seen people do yes. that is that right oh yes um so traditionally we've been doing these things for a long time before orthodox medicine mm. sometimes it works sometimes it doesn't okay but currently there's research and the center for scientific research has come out with certain agents they are not popular but they really help mm. with some of these things. Okay, yes, so yes. they are possible. Yes, it's very possible. I see. Um, so if after I'm done, you know, giving myself the first aid or what we call the... Um, the rescue. The rescue, and I go to the hospital, then what happens? What are some of the things I should look out for to ensure that I'm actually being treated the right way? Because I'm sure that there are going to be some tests that will be conducted. Yeah. What are some of these tests? So at least I know what is happening to me and what, what's going to happen afterwards. Okay, so the diagnosis of asthma it's mainly clinical. Yeah. So usually you come to the hospital, you tell your story, we we'll ask you a few questions. We want to know if your parents have had similar conditions or even have history of allergy. Mm -hmm. Then it tells us a lot. So usually the symptoms we discussed, the family history, and then the physical examination will point us to whether you might be asthmatic or not. Ah, okay. But technically speaking, to make a diagnosis of asthma, we do what we call the pulmonary function tests. Mm. So the mainstay of that is pyrometry. So it's a device. Okay. So there's a device, patient is educated on what is going to be done, and then the patient undergoes some breathing exercises. So you breathe in, you breathe out, you breathe in, you breathe out, and this equipment measures your lung volume. So there are different volumes that you breathe in and out all the time. Now the main problem with asthma is that the amount of air you can breathe out is greatly affected because in asthma what happens is that air gets trapped in the lung and you can't breathe it out effectively. Okay. Yes. So usually we have certain cutoffs cutoff values and these values are age dependent. Mm -hmm. So we cannot go into all that. Okay. But basically this test is the mainstay for diagnosing asthma but most of the time asthma is diagnosed clinically all right. so not everybody does these tests to diagnose asthma. are they contagious because they say that when you especially during the hamatan when you see people coughing you should run as fast as possible you should have something covering your nose because they could transfer the bronchitis to you are they contagious um, okay so asthma is not contagious yeah it's a chronic hereditary condition but bronchitis can't be contagious because usually the virus that is causing the inflammation, mm -hmm. people will sneeze and cough, and the virus would be sent out by droplets. I see. So if you are close by, you might get it. But the, the good thing is that most of us have good immune system that is strong enough to handle these things. Mm -hmm. So most of the time, even for bronchitis, we don't advise that these patients or people having bronchitis rush and take antibiotics because oh. in a couple of days, the symptoms go on their own. Okay. So some supportive treatment, see the doctor, the doctor will give you maybe a cough syrup. But you shouldn't go and buy antibiotics no, at the pharmacy. No, you shouldn't go and buy antibiotics at the pharmacy simply because you are coughing. I see. Because antibiotics kill bacteria uh -huh. and most of the things that make us cough are viral. So you are so actually you're really treating something yes, else. Something else. You are contributing to antibiotic resistance. How do I boost my immune system around this time? Okay. Um, because that also is important. Yes, okay. it is. So the immune system usually picks up certain nutrients we eat to be strong. So usually fruits and vegetables, vitamin C, mm. zinc, all these things help 
boost the immune system mm -hmm. and help fight off some of these I conditions. See. Yes. Okay. Well, Dr. Elikem is here with me. He is a general practitioner. I'm going to go straight to the screens. Uh, a lot of messages are coming in as well. And this one says, good morning, Bella. Thanks to Jehovah for your life. Thank God for your life as well. I'm enjoying the show very well, especially with the education on asthma. I've learned something this morning. Special greetings going out to my super fantastic sports journalist, Juliet Bewa. I pray for more grace and good health to you all. This is Felix Inside J. Koforidia. Thank you. You should have told us what you learned today. Uh, good morning. Please, can asthma be cured? Doctor. Okay. Some, some, sometimes people tend to grow out of asthma. So yeah. usually children who begin to have these wheezy conditions in childhood tend to grow out of it. But mm. as for cure, mm, cure, not that is available okay. currently in our health system. All right. Hello. What should one do when one's asthma triggers without the person having an inhaler? Okay, so the person should immediately report to a health center, closest health center, mm. because the attack might be mild, but it might get worse over time if you don't have an inhaler. Okay. I, have, I had acute asthma when I was young. I was advised not to use the spray because it makes one depend on it, and the trigger will become worse. Okay, I adhered to it, and strangely, for the past 15 years, the symptoms have disappeared. So, yes, we talked about trigger control. Yeah. So once you know what triggers you, if you're able to avoid that, you'd be fine. You'd be fine. Yes. So you shouldn't rely on the inhaler? Is that what you're saying? Because I've heard that before. I don't know if that's what he meant by the no, spray. No, she's talking about sprays, like um, perfumes. I was advised not to use the spray. Okay. Oh, rather? I, I was advised not to use the spray because it makes one depend Ooh. on it. So I think she's talking about the inhaler. Because yes, I've heard yes, it before, yes, 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 yes. that you shouldn't always use the inhaler. Oh, no, uh, that's wrong. That's wrong? That's wrong. If you are an asthmatic and you have the inhaler and you have you begin to experience symptoms, it's very important to use your inhaler because the asthmatic attack may be mild initially okay. but may get severe over the period. I see. Especially if the trigger is still present. So I think that that um, can I use it even when the attack hasn't started or even if there's no trigger. So let's say daily before I step out, I just inhale. Just yes. one puff. Okay, so I, I didn't go into that. There are two types of inhalers. Okay. So we have the rescuer inhaler and we have the controller inhalers. Mm -hmm. So there are some people who have very frequent attacks, more than two attacks in a week. Some of them have the attack all day. Mm. Usually for them, we have inhalers that are called controller inhalers. They contain a different type of medication all right. that reduces the airway inflammation. So depending on your doctor's advice, you can be on a controller mm -hmm. inhaler. All right. Which, yes. which one on there is the controller inhaler? Okay, so Could you tell from what's on the screen? So you might not be actually, you, are, you might not be able to tell from the pictures because it's the active e agent, but the purple disc there uh -huh. is called serotide. It's a controller inhaler. All the right. orange one to the Flovent, that one is also a controller inhaler. I see. The Pomicot is a controller inhaler. So those, so those are some of the controller inhalers that we know. So those ones may be used morning and evening. Oh, okay. When you're having an attack or not. I see. Okay. So that you should get recommendation from your doctor. Yes, it should be prescribed by a doctor. I yes, see. Yes. Hello, what should one do when one one's asthma triggers without the person? I think I've read that already. Good morning. Please, I sneeze a lot with watery nose. Can it be linked to bronchitis or asthma? This is Charles. From Winneba. Yes, so asthma belongs to the big family of allergies. Asthma can be described vaguely as an allergy in the lung, mm. but allergies can occur in the nose. So there are people who, when they are exposed to dust, they, they sneeze and have runny nose, mm -hmm. skin allergies. So asthma belongs to that family. So yes, you can have an allergic rhinitis, that's yeah. what we call it. Okay. And you can have asthma in addition to that. I see. This one says, please, sir, does it mean asthma is hereditary? We've talked about it, but I'll let him briefly touch on it for your sake. That's Richard Ayambire. And quickly, thank you, TV3, for the education. Good work. Thank you so much. So is it hereditary again, yes. before I read the other messages? Yes, asthma is hereditary. Okay. A lot of genes have been related to asthma. And mm -hmm. most of these genes are passed on from parent to child. So, yes, asthma is hereditary. All right. Yeah. So, um, this one from Savia Pedato says, I have, I have a friend. Uh, a friend has asthmatic patients, and they suffer a lot whenever um, the trigger comes. What can we do since we aren't health practitioners to assist him before taking him to the hospital? Yes. So, what I was trying to explain is that usually we have these rescue medications. Mm. Most of the time, they are inhalers. Some people have pills. So, if you're asthmatic, you have to have these medications on you mm -hmm. all the time. And that is your only bet to try and abort your attack 
before you are sent to the hospital. Okay. But in the case where these people don't have these medications on them, you quickly rush them to the hospital because every hospital has these medications available. They are okay. emergency medications. An acute asthmatic attack is an, it's a medical emergency. Mm -hmm. And we have different severities. Some of them are life-threatening. I've actually seen people die from asthma. Yeah. It's not yeah. the normal, oh, wheezy, wheezy, I'll be fine thing. So it's very important that even when you have a mild asthmatic attack, you after you, you use your res rescue medication, mm -hmm. you immediately seek attention so that you can be evaluated for other What things. could cause the death? Because there have been cases where people died and they tried using the inhaler, they actually used it, but it still didn't work. Okay, so um, the severity of asthma can be classified into three. Mm -hmm. We have a mild asthmatic attack, we have a severe asthmatic attack and we have a life-threatening asthmatic attack. So usually people who have the mild asthmatic attack, you hear the wheezing, you hear them coughing, you see them finding it difficult to be, but they are fine. They are walking around. Mm -hmm. Those who are having the severe attack, now even talking becomes a problem because they need to breathe and talk at the same time. So they yeah. can't complete sentences. They breathe a bit faster. And the oxygen tension in the blood keeps going down. Okay. For those with life-threatening asthmatic attacks, they are usually comatose so they are unconscious they become blue and for those people even the inhalers will not work for them mm -hmm. you need to take them to the icu and intubate them and then use a machine to breathe for them so okay. the attack is aborted so we have different severities of the attack so depending on the severity of your attack your inhaler may work or, or it may, not, may work. not work all right another one on the screen says hi doctor i find it difficult breathing my breathing is loud uh, anyone close to me can hear it. Due to this, I get easily tired, especially when running or doing sporting activities. This is Genevieve from Pando. I What's think her she problem? Go to the hospital. Okay. Because even though we see it could be asthma, mm -hmm. it could be a lot of other things. Because heart failure can present like this. Mm -hmm. You can have a pneumonia and it would present like this. So the diagnosis of asthma, I said previously, yeah. is, 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 is based on clinical presentation. So you have to be seen and evaluated by a doctor. You have to talk to a doctor. The doctor will run certain tests. We don't only really think in one direction as doctors. Yeah. We usually have differential diagnosis. So you want to evaluate the heart, you want to evaluate the chest, the lungs, and then you want to see if this thing may be asthma or it may be something else. All right, now let's talk about hamatan itself because it dries up your nose. And yes. that's another message that someone has sent that I also experienced some sort of dry nose. Uh, what can I do to resolve that, please? This is Albert Stoji from Muniba because I realized that if you try picking your nose around hamatan, you're less with blisters in your nose because mm -hmm. of how dry, mm -hmm. um, you know, the inside is. So what can we do? Okay, some so mothers put inkuto in their baby's oh, nose and all that's that. That's what I was going to say. Yeah? It's really that simple. So the nasal cavity is just a continuation of the skin. Uh -huh. So whatever you're using to moisturize the skin okay. can go a bit in there and keep you... Keep your nose. All right, and I can rely on drinking a lot of water. Is yes, it advisable? Hydration is very important in this season. Okay. Mainly because we don't, um, we are not. Mainly because we are so dry, the weather keeps taking them. You know, we lose a lot of water from yeah. our skin. So usually, you have to be taking in a lot of water. Since you are you, you are not sweating, you might not perceive you are losing water. But, but you are. You are. You are losing water. It's just that you are not seeing it. Even more than yeah. the regular season. Yes, yes, you are losing a lot. How of much water. more water should I take? Because they say, well, in a day you should take how many? Three liters. And break it down. Three liters. How many glasses of water? Okay, a day? So your 500 ml bottle, you take six of them. So the small bottle. Yes. Six of them a day. Yes. That's so three liters. So during how much time should I increase the intake? Oh yes, you, you should take as much water as you can, but at least you should take three liters. At least. Yes. Okay. So as I much see. as you can tolerate. At least three liters. So I'm drinking like three bottles a day. It's not enough. So you see, people think that it's only when you are taking water. But sometimes you might be taking a drink. Sometimes you might be taking, there's water in food, there's water in cocoa. Yes. So but you should you have should, a water-based yes. diet. Yes, you should have like, Yes. Ah, I see. Okay. So this one says that uh, anytime I go to the hospital and I ask whether my parents are having it, and I said, no, the doctor says I'm not asthmatic. Wait, I'm trying to understand this. Anytime I go to the hospital and I, I'm asked whether my parents have asthma and I say no, the doctor say then I'm not asthmatic. Okay, so it means that he's been having some attacks maybe. Yeah. But he goes to the hospital and says my parents don't have this and they assume that then you don't, you don't have asthma. 
So not all asthma is hereditary. You mentioned that mentioned some are that, environmental. Yes. Sometimes too, people might be born into families without asthma and they may have asthma. Yeah. So it's actually multifactorial. There are so many factors that we can't exhaust in this meeting. Mm. There are so many things. Sometimes premature babies tend to grow up and have these respiratory conditions. Yeah. Babies who are not breastfed by their mothers. I mean, there are so many factors and associations. Mm. But simply because your parents don't have asthma and you are presenting with symptoms, does not mean that you may not be asthmatic. All right. Thank you so much. Dr. Elikam is a general practitioner. We've been talking about the Hamatan and um, how it, it could lead to asthma attacks and bronchitis as well and how you can also protect yourself so as much as possible hydrate and also use oil-based um, skin, skin products and not your lotion so ditch your lotions this hamatan season they are water-based and they're not working because it dries up your skin faster than normal and get some oil or shea butter on your skin it's important thank you so much for joining thank us on the show